Hello, Thomas Hillen Eriksen, still on fieldwork in sunny and today slightly windy Queensland, Gladstone. <clears throat> At the moment, I'm about uh, half an hour's drive due northwest out of Gladstone uh, in the rural township of Mount, Lark Mount Larkham, which is part of the Gladstone Regional uh, Council area, uh, but which is uh, in many ways an independent community. And one reason I'm interested in Mount Larkham is the fact that there is an ongoing, it's a simmering, smothering, low-key but very long-term tension between local farmers and graziers on the one hand and an expanding mining operation on the other hand. We're talking about the East End Mine. Somehow I didn't have the wits to ask the people I know here uh, what it is the East End of, but it's called the East End Mine. It belongs to Cement Australia and it's a lime stone mine. Limestone being essential for the production of cement. So let's just have a look at the mine first and then I'll tell you the story afterwards. So here we are, the East End Mine. You can only see a bit of it from here, but it gives you an impression. It's an open pit mine operated by machinery and digs increasingly deep to get to the limestone. Now in order to get to the limestone. Here we are. In order to get to the limestone, it's necessary to pump out water. So water has to be pumped out from the bottom of the mine pit um, and it's something which is being done continuously. This has taken place since 1964 so it's not exactly new. However, farmers and graziers in the area have for a long time been wary and worried about planned expansions of the mine because this is not a particularly wet area. I mean rain doesn't fall here on a predictable basis. Some years are very wet, we've had a few very very wet years now, but this year has been very dry so far and it will probably continue that way because summer is soon over and most of the rain in this part of Australia comes during summer. So in other words farmers depend on groundwater, they have bores and they pump up water. They depend on that for their, uh, for their cattle, for watering and for other purposes for which one uses water. There has been a suspicion for a long time that the pumping out of water by the East End Mine led to a depletion of the water table. In other words, that the groundwater declined, that it went down. You had to go deeper and deeper and deeper to get to the water and somehow the water became... Sorry about that, that was me. Um, and the water quality also seemed to deteriorate. So that was a real source of concern. Um, the mine is still trying to expand, they're still buying a property which leads to resentment on other counts because uh, some of the local farmers feel that if, if this is going to be a vital uh, living rural area um, farmers should be con uh, encouraged to stay and not encouraged to leave and sell out and leave their land to the mine which is insatiable it seems in the long run because uh, the demand for limestone is not going down and there is limestone in much under, underneath much of the land around here. So that is a, a, an, an ongoing conflict. But let me just focus on one thing for now. In 1995, an action group called EMAG, the East End Mine Action Group, was formed by a number of concerned local farmers and citizens uh, who have been um, canvassing and they've been approaching and talking to and placed demands on and submitted comments on so-called EISs, environmental impact statements, which have been issued by the mine whenever, which is obli obligatory, whenever you expand the mining operation, and, um, and have tirelessly campaigned uh, to, um, to get the authorities and the uh, owners of the mine to listen to their, um, to their analysis. One of them, Alec Lukey, who no longer lives in the area, but who lived here for many years, and in fact the Lukey family has a long history at uh, Mount Larkham, um, even wrote a book called Road to Exploitation, which is a meticulous and detailed book where he invokes scientific knowledge, the language of experience, he goes into law and politics, and uh, it's a very erudite book. Uh, and uh, more, uh, even more impressive for having been written by a man with no formal education, but who somehow had to read up on the expert knowledge in order to be able to match um, the, um, the statements and the views that were being put forward by politicians and by the mine itself. 
So, in other words, uh, expert knowledge versus expert knowledge. But in addition, the knowledge of experience is also being uh, invoked in uh, opposition to the expert knowledge. Farmers who who know from personal experience that the water table has gone down and uh, who approach uh, the mine in order, in some cases, to get compensa compensation, in some cases, to make them, uh, the, mining the mine owners um, uh, change their behavior. So, in other words, this story of which I've now given you the bare bones. It's an ongoing saga. It's not going to end anytime soon. The East End Mine continues to buy up blocks of land from people in the area who are willing uh, to sell. And the EMAG people and other locals continue to campaign uh, towards regional politicians, state politicians, and the mining uh, executives to uh, get a better understanding for their view, which is that Mount Larkham should continue to be a vibrant uh, rural community, um, and uh, that farmers, in fact, should be encouraged to um, continue doing what they do, rather than selling out to the benefit of a uh, mine. So it fits into the jigsaw as a piece, together with stories that I've told before. I've told you the story of the Bandwall, the story of Tagini, the story of the dredging of the harbour, and uh, I also gave you a bit of the story about uh, the air quality and the uh, concerns about health in uh, Gladstone. And this is a story of the same kind, which is about very much about different kinds of knowledge and power, and I should say... It is a story about what happens when big money meets small money. See you later.